Some people believe that my job as a leader is to build followers, when really my job as a leader is to build leaders, to, to, to be able to get airmen that when they walk away from me that I feel confident that they can be the next coach or that they can be the next chief or whatever it is that I've been preparing them for. I don't, I don't know that everybody understands that, but, but that's, that's an area where I think the best leaders, they really understand the importance of building and growing other leaders. I'm looking for NCOs across our Air Force to wake up in the morning and ask the question, hey, what should I be doing to keep our airmen alive? What should I be doing to make sure the airmen that I'm responsible for are well-trained? What should I be doing to make sure that they're resilient? What should I be doing to make sure that they are fit and healthy? But I think change really begins with you and I you know, again, waking up every day saying, hey, what, with the two or three or 10 or 12 people that I'm responsible for, man, what can I be doing, doing better? I'm reading this book uh, for the second or third time now called Legacy. It's about the uh, New Zealand All Blacks, the rugby team. And uh, one of their um, philosophies is champions practice more than they play, right? And we have to get people thinking thinking that, that, you know, how do I get to that championship status as a leader is you gotta put in the time and you gotta dedicate yourself to learning. And you gotta work around, everybody's busy, nobody has time, you know, but, but what I always tell my folks is there's always time for leadership, there's always time for teaching, there's always time for training, there's always time for mentoring. Either you'll make time on the front end or you'll make it on the back end. Right. It's up to you. You can decide whether you want to invest in their future up front or wait for them to mess up and then figure out, okay, now how do I clean all this up?